Hello, in this video we give a proof on the independence of the sample mean and the sample variance when our data are normally distributed. Um, I was looking for a different article when I happened to see the title of this and it intrigued me and it deals with proving that the mean and the variance, sample mean and sample variance are independent when our data are normally distributed. It's, and it's an article from Stefan Stigler. And the article goes like this, that we have data that are independent, identically distributed, normal random variables, mean mu and, and variance sigma squared. We're going to let the sample mean, so this is x n bar, so it's a sample mean based on a sample of size n. And s n squared is going to be the sample variance based on a sample of size n, specifically the un biased variants and the theorem is this in the article that a that the mean is normally distributed b that this is distributed as a chi squared and that the mean and the variance sample mean and variance are independent and they use a proof by induction so let's let n equal to then we can write the sample mean of this sample of size 2 in term in in this fashion so it's uh, yeah and then the sample variance can be written like this and now I'm gonna make reference to a video I just put out called adding one observation and recalculating the sample mean and variance we're also I'm also going to allude to this on page 2 but the m sample mean and sample variance can be written like this now we know that x1 and x2 are independent because it's a random sample and they're normally distributed and, and a linear combination of normally distributed random variables is again normally distributed well this right here is the sample mean and so this can be shown to be normally distributed with mean mu and variance sigma squared over 2 which this satisfies part A. Now part B, x1, x2 is a linear combination of independent normal random variables so it itself is normal random variable and you can show that it's normal 0 and variance 2 sigma squared. Well if we divide this by the standard deviation so that's the square root of 2 sigma squared then this is a normal 0, 1 random variable and if we square a normal 0, 1 random variable, then it's a chi-squared with 1 degrees of freedom. So we square this, but this piece here with the 2 is the sample variance. So it's the sample variance over sigma squared. And then we it's 2 minus 1 times the sample variance. This is, is chi-squared with 2 minus n, which is 1. And so part b is satisfied. Now, here, if we look at the bivariate random variable, where this is x1 plus x2 and x1 minus x2, see, we could call this y1 and y2 if we want, but I'm going to leave it like this to illustrate that these are the random variables. Now, note that if we take any linear combination of this, so a times this first one and b times this second one, and rearrange, then we get a linear combination of independent normal random variables which itself is a normally distributed. And one of the definitions of bivariate normal is that every possible linear combination is a normal random variable and it is in this case so that says that this is a bivariate normal. So they're independent normally distributed which implies this is bivariate normal. Now let's look at the covariance between these two random variables and then in the in the normal setting bivariate normal setting we know if the covariance is independent I mean zero covariance is zero then they're independent and actually vice versa so let's look at the covariance between these two random variables so we take the covariance of 1 1 covariance of x1 and x2 but they're independent so that's zero covariance of x2 and x1 they're independent so that's zero 
and then minus the covariance of x2, x2. Well, the since it's the same variable, that's the variance of x1, which is sigma squared. Variance of x2, sigma squared. Sigma squared minus sigma squared is zero. So that implies that these two random variables are independent. And then any function of these two <coughs> random variables is also independent. So that implies the mean and the variance are independent, right? Because these are functions of these independent random variables. So they're independent. So next in the uh, induction step, and this is a proof by induction, I should make sure to point that out, that we're going to assume it's true for a sample size n and then prove that it must be true for a sample size of n plus 2. So we're going to assume it's a sample of size n plus 1 and then the sample mean can be written in this fashion and again, I'm going to defer to that video I just put out called adding one observation to a sample and recalculating the sample mean and variance. And also in that video, I show that the sample variance can be written in this fashion, where it's the sample variance of the first n, add that observation, and then the mean of the sample of size n, the first n. Okay. Well, Here's a couple notes here that, that are very important. First of all, xn bar and xn plus 1 are independent, right? They're, this We're random sampling, and this is independent of every observation in this, so they're independent. Um, right? So this is independent of this. So xn bar is normally distributed by mean mu sigma squared over n and this is assumed true in our induction step now x n plus one you know is, is from a normal random or normal distribution mean mu and sigma squared so a linear combination of independent normal random variables is itself a normal random variable right but this right here is actually x n plus 1 bar. So now to find the mean and the variance, we just take the expected value of these, which we get this, and then the expected value of this combination is, it's the variance of this, remember this piece comes out squared, and it's the variance of this, plus this comes out squared times the variance of that, and then there's no covariance because this is independent of this, so it's zero, and then when you add those together, um, you get sigma squared over n plus 1, so that says the mean of the sample of n plus 1 is normally distributed with this, and that satisfies part A of the theorem. Now part B, again, so we'll focus on this, we know that the n plus 1 observation is independent of the first n observation, so that it's independent of this sample variance, right? That's what this says. Then um, we know that x, the mean and the sample mean and sample variance are independent because we're assuming that true for the induction hypothesis. And then um, yep, and then we know that the x n bar and x n plus 1 are independent right? So we know what that just says is that this is independent of this, this is independent of that, and those two are independent. So when we look at this linear combination, which is this piece here, they're independent normal random variables, which itself makes it normal random variable. And then if we divide by the standard deviation, it's a normal 0, 1 random variable. And now, if we divide this by, or I mean, if we square it, then it becomes a chi-squared with 1. But this right here is if we divide by this uh, sigma squared. So if, now this, if we divide by sigma squared, by the induction hypothesis, it is a chi-squared with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, right? But we divide sigma squared, divide sigma squared, divide sigma squared, it doesn't change this. So 
we just showed that this is a chi squared with one degree of freedom. This is a chi squared with minus or n minus one degrees of freedom. And we're adding independent chi squares, so you add the degrees of freedom. And so this is a chi squared with n degrees of freedom, which implies that that's a chi squared with n degrees of freedom. So part two or part B is satisfied in the theorem. Now here, if we look at this linear combination um, of random variables, we want to show it's a bivariate normal. And that's because every linear combination of this is a linear combination of these two independent normal random variables. So, it's, so by definition, this is a bivariate normal distribution. So let's look at the covariance between those two then it's the covariance of this and this, which is zero, because they're independent. Covariance of this, which is this piece here. Covariance of that, and then they're independent, so it's zero. Now this is sigma squared. This is minus n times the variance of X, the mean, which is sigma squared over n. So sigma squared minus sigma squared is zero. So that says these two random variables are independent. Now, if we, so functions of these independent random variables are set itself independent. So that implies that the sample mean and sample variance are independent because they're functions, right, of these independent random variables. So that implies they're independent. Well, that's uh, the end of the video, and that's what I uh, just summarized in the article by uh, Stefan Stigler. I think it's a pretty nice little proof. Um, hope you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.